Izzy and this is Dizzy Quilts and Sews. Welcome to part three of our baby quilt quilt along. All right, so this is the final part or the final video in the baby quilt quilt along series. So by now we have cut all of our fabric, we've pieced our blocks and we've made a quilt top. In today's video, we are going to talk about basting or preparing our quilt sandwich and then quilting it and finally sewing on the binding. So lots to cover. Um, I'm going to start with first the basting. So I'm not going to show you a video of me basting this quilt. I basically use the exact same method I always use and that's to use boards to roll my top and backing um, to, on, onto basically and then I use needle and thread to thread baste my, uh, my sandwich together. So if you want to get the step by step and see exactly how I do that, I'm going to link a video down below where I take you step by step through putting your backing on your board, your top on the board, and how to put the batting in between the two, and then using needle and thread to baste everything together. So if you've not done that yet, make sure you prepare your back. So again, and I mentioned that in the first video, our quilt top is going to finish at about 40 inches wide by 50 inches long. So you want your backing fabric to be at least five inches bigger total. So basically 45 by 55 total, at least. So if that means you need to piece some fabrics together, that's perfectly fine. A pieced backing is amazing. If you've got uh, some sheets that you are gonna make, maybe make a muslin out of, you can use a sheet to back up your baby quilt, that's what I'm doing. Or you can use some yardage uh, fat quarters, whatever you have basically to put your backing together. So if you've not done that yet, pause this video, go back and have a look at how I baste my quilts and prepare my quilt sandwich, and then come back here where we're gonna talk about quilting our quilt. All right, so I've got my quilt sandwich over here. It's all basted and ready to go. I've decided I'm going to do some free motion quilting on this quilt just because it's small and it's going to be faster than using a walking foot and doing some straight line quilting on this quilt. Now, if you have a walking foot, which is this contraption over here, if you have one of these, then by all means use it and you can quilt some straight lines onto your quilt. You can either use the seam lines to guide you or go very organic and just basically go up and down the quilt any which way you want. I've decided to go with free motion quilting because like I said, I'm a lot faster at it than I am with the walking foot. So, and I'm on a deadline. <laughs> this quilt needs to be ready for the baby shower. So I'm going to put this foot aside and I'm going to take my free motion quilting foot, which is this thing here uh, from my machine. So basically this is where the needle is going to go up and down into the fabric. And this is a foot from my Juki, but pretty much all sewing machines have free motion or darning feet, I think they're called. So yeah, so check in the feet that came with your machine or maybe you have one of these. Now, if you're gonna use this and you're gonna free motion quilt with me, the first thing you need to do is lower your feet dogs. So I'm gonna do that now because you don't want when you're free motion quilting, basically the feed dogs don't get engaged and they don't play a role at all in moving the fabric. You do that. So when the quilt sandwich is under the needle, you basically use your hands to move it around 
and quilt your designs onto the quilt. So I'm gonna put this on. My feed dogs are down. I'm gonna put the stitch length on my machine to zero because again, your hands are gonna be controlling the speed, your stitch length, and um, how the fabric basically glides under the needle. Now I brought a notebook over here because I'm gonna basically show you the design I decided to do for this quilt. I like to practice a design I haven't done in a long time or a new design on paper before I start stitching it. Obviously, me moving the pen on the paper is not exactly the same as me moving fabric under a needle, but just doing the design a few times is kind of, it's, it's going to refresh my brain into how this looks. So I'm going to do flowers. This is a little baby quilt, and I love the texture that this design puts on the quilt. So just to very, very quickly show you, there are about a million free motion designs you can make. There are about a million YouTube videos you can watch. This one is super simple and it's an all over design. So very forgiving. You can't get yourself stuck in a corner. Very, very easy. So I would start somewhere up here in the batting around the middle of the quilt. And you basically just go in a circle and then stitch petals all around another level of petals again all around and then to get yourself out of the corner over here just go and start a new flower and go with the petals another layer of petals and again i'm at the border or stuck in a corner so I'm going to zoom around and start a new flower over here. Now, the smaller you make your flower, the longer it's going to be to cover your quilt with these flowers. But you can't go too, too big because then you're going to lose some of that um, overall texture and the overall design. So basically, I'm just going to go around the entire quilt just making these cute little flowers and filling in all of the little spaces on my quilt top. So super, super easy, this one. Now free motion quilting does take a little bit of practice. You really have to move your hands at, at a very, very steady pace, but you can't be too slow. So you kind of have to get a feel for how quick you need to go. Can't go too slow, you can't go too fast, you just, and you need to be very consistent, and that, that's how you get nice, even stitches. So if you have any scraps, if you really want to free motion quilt your quilt, and you've not done it many times or at all, and you have scraps, I would suggest you take some scrap batting and scrap fabric, and make a bunch of little sandwiches for yourself and just practice moving the fabric under the needle until you feel like you've got your rhythm going and you've got the design straight in your head, basically. All right, one thing I forgot to mention, um, you can see I have quilting gloves. Um, I can't remember where I got these, but these are Fonz and Porter. Fonz and Porter, yeah. They have like these little grippy things on the end that allows you to grip the fabric of your quilt easier so that you don't put too much strain on your hands and arms and shoulders as you're moving the quilt sandwich around. It's, it's just a lot easier and believe me, they make a huge difference. I used to get really bad pains shooting all the way up my arms and my shoulders. And when I got the gloves, um, yeah, things got a lot better. 
You can see that I've been using them a lot because my nails are starting to poke through. I might need to get a new pair. Okay, so I've got my quilt sandwich under or on my machine. I'm going to take some of the basting stitches off now where my quilting is going to go. So again, I'm about in the middle of the quilt at the very top, but in the middle. I've got my thread here. So what I'm going to do, I'm in the batting. So I'm going to bring my needle down and back up again just to pull up my bobbin thread. Okay, hold on. There we go. And I'm going to pull it and get it out of the way. Awesome. And this is to avoid some thread nests underneath. So my foot is down. My feed dogs are not engaged. My stitch length is at zero. And I, I do have... Um, speed control on this machine and I personally have it on the fastest setting but if you can put it maybe down to medium that'll avoid the machine kind of going too fast for your hands and it just might be easier to get your rhythm that way so holding on to the threads here so they're out of my way I'm gonna start and I usually do a couple of stitches in place just to kind of lock this in or knot this in and then I'm just going to start doing my flowers just going to get my threads out of the way here there we go all right so my loop and now my petals Now, I don't have my extension table on here because my tripod and my table won't fit together on here. But it's going to be a lot easier when I'm able to put my table on here because right now my hand wants to fall off. With my table, it's nice and flat. So let's do one more flower. So I'm going to get out of this area here because I want to go over here. So to do that, I'll just stitch a third line of petals. Okay, now that I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and start a new flower. There we go. And I'm just going to keep going. And I like to divide my quilt into quadrants or blocks. So I'm going to go all the way to the edge of this quilt. So go two squares over and then go down a square and come back to the middle and go that way. It just helps me make sure that every, uh, every area is going to get quilted um, properly. So... I'm going to go for a little bit. I'm going to put my extension table on because this is really difficult. And I'll come back and show you my progress. All right. So I don't know if you can see this, but I've basically gone to the edge of the quilt. So I've basically quilted half of a row um, with my flower design that you can see. Like it's a really random kind of all over design. So now I'm gonna go down to the next row and quilt it all the way to the middle over here. 
and then go down and come back and so on. And then once all of the right hand side of the quilt is done, I'm going to flip it and basically do the same thing on the other side. All right, so here is my quilt, all quilted. So you can see the texture on it is just fabulous. And, you know, it's not perfect. It's really not perfect, but neither does it need to be perfect. And you can see the texture even better on the back. Look at that. That's amazing. I love it. Love it. So after you've quilted your quilt, either with free motion quilting like I did or with straight lines with the walking foot, you need to do what we call squaring up your quilt. And that's basically just removing the excess backing and batting that you have on all four sides of your quilt. And, you know, many people use a ruler, make sure your angles are at 90 degrees. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I just use scissors and follow the edge of my quilt. So basically, I just follow the edge of the quilt and cut the excess that way. Again, <clears throat> is it perfect? Nope, but I don't care. So, yeah. So the next thing after you've squared up your quilt is to make your binding and then sew up the binding. So we're going to do that next. All right, so I'm back at the sewing machine and I've got my binding strips ready to assemble. Now, if you followed the cutting instructions, why don't I just tip you up a bit so I can talk to you and not at you? There we go. So if you followed the cutting instructions very carefully and used fat quarters to piece all of your blocks, you will have strips left over from your fat quarters that you can just string together or sew together and have enough uh, length to bind your entire quilt. I was not careful and I made some mistakes and I miscalculated if you've been following since the beginning, you'll know this. So I had to cut strips from yardage. So I had a bolt of this Kona gray fabric and figured it would make a nice frame for the quilt. So I'm gonna use this. But how you assemble your shorter strips or longer strips is basically the exact same thing. So you can follow these instructions to piece your binding um, and if you are using your fat quarter strips you're going to have very nice colorful binding which is awesome which is what I really wanted <laughs> but whatever so all right so I'm going to show you how I sew my strips together into a long 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 strip and then we'll talk about how we prepare the binding for sewing onto the quilt all right, the goal here is to try and avoid too much bulk in your seams so that when you go to attach your binding on your quilt, you don't have lumps all along the quilt. So you take one of your strips, put it right side up, and then take another strip and put it right side, side down at a 90 degree angle like this. So right sides together, basically. And then if you want to, you can definitely pin this in place. At a couple of spots. And then you can mark from one corner to the next make right here and then you're going to stitch on this line so that when it's sewn and you flip it over you're going to have a nice even uh, strip of fabric. I like to eyeball it. Um, yeah 
Also, I have these this tape on my machine table. And if I line up the corner with that red line here, I get a perfect um, line of stitching every time. So, all right, so I'm going to line up the fabric with my red line and with my foot here. And I'm just gonna stitch all the way across. Oh, my feet dog are still down. Make sure your feet dogs are back up if you free motion quilted. And your stitch length still at 2.5. There we go. All right, I'm gonna back stitch here like I always do, just to make sure that my seam is secure. All right, so when I lift this up or take this off under the needle, you'll see that I have a nice straight strip of fabric. So I'm just gonna cut this at about, leaving about a quarter inch of the seam allowance. And then when we fold this in half, let me show you. So when we fold this in half after the seam allowance is gone, the bulk of the seam, some of it is gonna be here and some of it is gonna be here instead of all in one place so that when you're sewing this down and then folding it under to enclose the raw edges on your quilt, the bulk is distributed in more place than one basically. And it, like I said, it avoids the little bumps everywhere you have a seam. So I'm not gonna cut this and press this right away. I'm just gonna basically continue attaching my strips. So this one side, right side up, and then add the other one right side down. Put a couple of pins. And then sew across. Again, don't be shy to mark your line here. One little trick when you're sewing and you're trying to go in a straight line, don't look at your needle. Your needle is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Look at where your needle is going and almost magically, you're gonna sew in the straight line. So there you go, my second seam, nice and straight. So now I'm gonna add another strip, being careful that I'm keeping this right side up and then putting this right side down. Pinning. And sewing. So again, I'm keeping my eye on where I need the needle to go, not on where it is. And then my last strip. All done. So now I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna trim these, um, leaving about a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm gonna take this to my pressing station and press my seams open. 
all along my big long strip. So once I've done that, once I've trimmed these and pressed them open, I'm gonna press my entire strip, binding strip in half, wrong sides together like this. And this is the binding that we're gonna sew onto the quilt. All right, so I've got my binding all ready. So you see I've pressed it in half. Oh, you can see that little bear has been in here. This quilt is definitely gonna have to be washed before I give this. All right, so I've got my binding all ready. I'm putting it to the side of my machine here. Um, I am going to change my foot to a walking foot just because with all of the layers, it's easier with the walking foot. like to sew my binding to the front of the quilt and then flip it to the back side and attach it by stitching in the ditch from the front. So I'm going to start with the about the middle of one of the short sides. So this is exactly the middle of one of the short sides on my quilt. I'm gonna leave a tail of about, I don't know, 10-ish inches. And then I'm quilting this raw edges aligned here and I'm using the edge of my walking foot to guide me, which is about a quarter of an inch. So I think I said during video one, but just to make sure, these binding strips are cut at two and a half inches. So when folded, they're about one and a quarter inch wide. So I'm stitching at one quarter inch. And then when I'm flipping it on the other side, I'm going to have a nice quarter inch binding here, which I really like. You can cut your strips a little thinner, um, but then I find it's more difficult to catch it with the machine stitching from the front, uh, from the front side. If you're planning on hand stitching your binding down to the back, then definitely you can cut your strips a little narrower. But yeah, I cut them at two and a half and then machine attached them basically both to the front and to the back. All right, so I've got my stitch length at about two and a half, 2.5. And I'm just gonna start again. I'm leaving a nice tail here so that I can attach it when I'm done going around it. So I'm gonna start back stitch and then so right down to almost the corner, but I'm going to stop before I get to the corner. One thing I didn't do, and I probably should have done, to be honest, is pin my binding all the way around just to make sure that none of my seams are going to end up at a corner. It, it's just more difficult to have nice mitered corners when you've got a seam in there. Now, I forgot to do that, and with my luck, I'm going to have a seam right at one of my corners. But anywho, so we're going to stitch. All right, so I'm about, oh, I don't know, an inch and a half away from the corner. What I'm gonna do now is put a pin at about a quarter inch from the end. I'm eyeballing it here, but you can definitely measure it. So I've got a pin, I don't know if you can see this, right here 
at the edge, about a quarter an inch, quarter of an inch. Now I'm gonna continue stitching until I get to my pin, and then I'm gonna veer at a 45 degree angle right off the quilt. So I'm slowly stitching until I get to the pin, and then I'm stopping, needle down. I'm gonna take my pin out, and then I'm gonna lift my foot, rotate the quilt 45 degrees, and stitch right off. So if you can see, I don't know if you can see the stitches, so I stitched to about a quarter inch and then went right off the quilt. See, I'm right at the edge at the corner, right off. Now what I'm gonna do is fold the binding to the right side Hold it like this and then flip it to the left side, making sure I've got a nice fold right here on the edge of the quilt. And then I'm gonna put a pin in this just to make sure it stays put. So again, I folded it to the right, then folding it to the left making sure my fold is nicely aligned with my raw edge here of the quilt and pinning it in place. Now I'm gonna turn my quilt so that I can start right from the edge where I've got the fold in my binding. Again, at a quarter inch, I'm gonna start back stitch and then keep going all the way to the next corner and do the exact same thing. Now you don't need to go fast here. A walking foot is not supposed to run, it's supposed to walk. So take your time. Make sure your binding and your quilts are nicely aligned and stitch at a consistent quarter inch. again. So I'm going to grab my pin and again put it in at about a quarter inch from the edge. Stitch right up to it slowly and stop needle down. Take my pin out, lift my foot, rotate it 45 degrees and stitch right off the edge. All right, same thing as before. I'm gonna flip it to the right, flip it to the left. Make sure I've got a nice fold on the edge. And once I've got everything aligned nicely, put a pin to hold my binding in place. And then turn the quilt so that I can go down the next side. And I'm just gonna keep going around until I'm on the last side and close to, or basically right after turning the last corner, I'm gonna stop and then show you how we attach both ends of the binding. All right, so I just, just turned the corner on the last side and as I predicted, I have a seam right in the corner um, and it was the last corner, of course, so I'm not going to unpick the whole thing. I'm going to make it work. So just like I did every other corner, I'm going to start stitching at the edge, right where my fold is, and stitch just a few inches. I want to give myself lots of room 
to attach the binding or to attach the two ends together. So stitch a few inches, back stitch, and then cut your thread and get it off the machine. Now I'm gonna turn you around because I need to go on a flat surface here for the next couple steps. All right, so I'm gonna lay my quilt on the table. I'm gonna move everything else, what a mess this is. All right, so I'm gonna lay my quilt with the side that we're gonna attach the binding or the last side as flat as I can get it. with the two tails on top. Now I'm gonna try and make it so that I have as much room as I can to attach the two ends. So I'm gonna grab my scissors, I'm gonna grab my small square ruler. All right, so I'm gonna cut my the first tail, so the tail I left when I first started stitching this, and I'm going to cut to about here, leaving me with about 10 inches of tail unattached. I'm going to make sure this is flat along the edge of the quilt, as flat as I can get it. And then take the remaining binding, so the tail that's loose on the other side, lay it flat, and you'll see that it's meeting over here, or it's overlapping. Now I'm gonna take my little ruler, and I wanna make sure that my two ends, or my two tails, are overlapping by two and a half inches. Two and a half inches because my binding strips were two and a half. If your binding strips had been narrower, so two and a quarter, for example, you'd make sure the overlap is at two and a quarter. In my case, I'm gonna measure two and a half, making sure both ends are nice and flat, and I'm gonna cut the tail so that I have a two and a half inch overlap right here. All right. So far, so good. I'm gonna grab my pins. So now what we wanna do is the tail that was on the right, we're gonna flip it right side up like this. Then the one that's on the left-hand side, right side down on top of the other one, just like when we joined them originally. So I've got right sides together. I'm gonna put a couple pins. And just like we did before when we assembled all of our strips together, I'm gonna now stitch from this corner to this one here. You might need to Make sure that you bring your quilt in close like this so that you can get this onto your machine. So you're gonna stitch here, trim to a quarter of an inch, and then it's gonna basically go like this. You're gonna fold it in half again and finish attaching it to your quilt. So let me turn you around again. So we're back at the machine. Okay. So here we go. I'm just gonna stitch this together. Now you wanna give yourself lots of room and that's why I leave my tails pretty long because if not, it's pretty difficult to get an accurate seam here. There we go. So now we've got our binding all nice and straight. I'm gonna cut this off. 
and scissors. All right. You can basically press this seam open with your fingers. No need to go to the pressing station here. Fold it in half, making sure your seam allowances are open. And now I'm gonna put the quilt and binding under the needle again, starting exactly where I left off, aligning everything. All right, so I'm gonna stitch, back stitch, and continue to sew my binding down at a quarter of an inch. And if I measured right, and if I did all of this right, my binding is gonna be exactly the right length and it's gonna make, lay nice and flat. Again, make sure your seam allowance is open. I think mine flipped to one side. There we go. Okay, and I'm getting to the end where I started attaching the binding. Whoa. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So I'm going to go right up to my original stitches, back stitch, and cut my thread. And as you can see, my binding is nice and flat and exactly the right length. So we're done attaching this to the front of our quilt. All right, so the next step is basically to flip this. Well, what you could do, something I never do just because I can't be bothered, but what you could do is press your binding and the seam allowance away from the quilt. So basically just pressing the binding nice and flat all along here, making sure your seam allowance is towards the binding. You could do that, I never do. All right, but the important thing is that you're bringing your binding to the back side. So like on the front, you have a nice, binding here. I use Wonder Clips. These things here, these things are wonderful. You can use pins, you can use um, binder clips even, but I have these Wonder Clips, so that's what I use. So I am gonna flip it to the back side, take a clip and clip it. Now I'm gonna be stitching from the front side of this. So if you are using Wonder Clips, make sure that the flat side of your clip is on the back of the quilt because we are gonna be stitching in the ditch here right along the binding and then catching the binding on the back side. So every couple of inches or so, I'm just gonna go and place my clip. Just like this. If you have enough clips to do the whole quilt, fabulous. I don't, so I can probably only do half of it. So I'm gonna go as far as I can with these clips and then start stitching it in the ditch, removing the pins as I go. All right, now I'm getting to a corner. Uh, this is not the one with the seam allowance, so this one should work. 
great. So what you wanna do is bring the binding to the back, pushing your little corner out here so that you have a nice corner. Then on a surface as flat as you can make it, push the binding down. I like to place a pin near the corner, but not at the corner. And then pulling the other side of the binding, basically bringing it down right to the other side like this. And then putting a clip. So I don't know if you were able to see that. So basically I want my binding here right up. Then the other side, I'm gonna bring it down until it meets for a nice corner. And then I'm gonna put a pin or a clip, I should say. And then just continue going around the quilt, putting my clips. Like this. Placing a clip at every corner, making sure you've got nice mitered corners or nice clean corners, both on the front and back, and go around. Now, when you've put all your pins on, you can bring it back to the machine. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna place the quilt under the needle bef between two of my clips here. So basically one of the clips is gonna stay in there until the very end. All right, so I am lining things up so that when I put my needle down, I am right up against the binding, but in the quilt, not the binding. So I'm gonna use my hand wheel here to make sure I'm really precise and put my foot down. And you can lengthen your stitch length to three at this point because the binding is secure. And all you're doing now is attaching it to the back. So start stitching, go slow and try and stitch exactly next to the binding, but in the quilt. Now it's probably a good idea to use thread that's gonna blend fairly well with the quilt top and, but most importantly with your binding because on the back side, you're gonna see the line of stitching. And I can show you that once I've done a few inches here. So I'm going along, removing my clips as I get to them trying not to stitch on the binding, but on the quilt instead, stitching right up against the binding. All right, I wonder if you can see this. I don't think so, it's blending in so well. Just let me get to the darker gray here and you'll be able to see a little bit better. Okay, so you can see, oh my gosh, you can barely see my stitches right here next to the binding. But on the back side, you can see them really, really well. So my, my thread is blending really well with the color of my fabric. So that's probably what you want. All right, when you get to a corner, stitch right up to the corner. 
you may need to use your wheel so that your stitch is right in the middle of that corner. Then lift your foot, needle down, turn your quilt, and then put your foot down and just keep going. Until you get all the way around. So I'm gonna continue stitching my binding down and I'll come back when I'm done. All right, so I'm done. So I finished attaching the binding to the front, like I showed you, and then I flipped it to the back and then stitched it down. So you can see the stitching on the back, but from the front, you get a nice, clean finish. And uh, yeah, I love the texture of the quilting. It's so nice. And the sheet that I used on the back is also very nice and soft. And you can really see the texture on the back, which I love. So yeah, so now the last step is labeling your quilt. So I'm just going to take a fabric marker and write a little message for the baby and sign my name and date this right on the back because it's a solid color. But what you can do is basically take a piece of fabric, like a square or any shape really, write your message on it with a fabric marker or so permanent marker and then fold the edges in by a quarter of an inch, press and then hand stitch your label to your quilt could be as simple as that. Or if you like, there are about a million how to's or tutorials either on YouTube or out there if you Google it um, on how to prepare quilt labels. They can be extremely intricate and very decorative. But yeah, it's up to you. I strongly suggest that you do sign your work though. So either put a label or simply take a fabric marker and at the very least put your name and the date on which you finished your quilt. So there you go. All done. Now this thing has to go in the wash because it is literally covered with little bear's hair. <laughs> All right. So that's it. We are done. Um, I had a lot of fun putting this quilt together and creating the videos from you guys and reading all of your comments. Thank you so much for those of you who followed along and who made a quilt of your own. I would love to see pictures. So if you post them to Instagram, please tag me in your post. I'm at Dizzy Quilts blog on Instagram. Thanks again. If you liked this video, please give me a like on your way out and consider subscribing to the channel. I would really love that. Thanks again, and I will see you soon.